Hey everyone, I'm Puri and welcome to Puriology. This is a face-off between the Intel i9-12900K and the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D in Escape from Tarkov. The i9-12900K is Intel's current flagship and its best gaming CPU. It has a hybrid architecture so it contains 8 P cores and 8 E cores. The P cores are performance cores and are dual threaded. The E cores are efficiency cores and are single threaded so it comes to a total of 24 threads and 16 cores. The P core base frequency is 3.2 and the max boost frequency is 5.1. The E core base frequency is 2.4 and the max boost frequency for the E cores is 3.9. The 12900K was $739 at launch. Today it can be found between $550 and $600. Its code name is Alder Lake and the platform is LGA1700 which is exclusive to 12th gen Intel. 13th gen will be on LGA1700 though. So that's good news. LGA1700 motherboards can be either DDR4 or DDR5. Currently there isn't much advantage to using DDR5 over DDR4 in gaming at least. The shocking thing to me was how badly Intel got beat and what this means going forward. The 5800X3D was released in April of 2022 and dethroned the 12900K as the king of gaming CPUs. So I've been asked why the 5800X3D is better than the 12900K in Escape from Tarkov uh, multiple times recently. And I came up with this analogy. It's not a perfect one-to-one -one analogy, but it should help to get the concept across. I imagine the CPU bottleneck kind of like a two-lane highway traffic jam. EFT tries to move a lot of data at once and causes these traffic jams. The 3 v cache is like opening up four extra lanes on that highway. Traditionally, we've been addressing the problem by trying to raise the speed limit or replacing the cars with faster cars. It's kind of like putting a Lamborghini into a traffic jam. You might get there marginally faster than someone in an economy car, but overall, you're wasting a lot of efficiency for that small gain. So upgrading to the 5800X3D is like opening up four extra lanes and addressing the actual issue, which is the volume of data or cars going through the highway. So even if the Lamborghini over there, the Intel uh, in this example, can go over 200 miles per hour, it's stuck on that two lane highway where it can't really stretch its legs. Whereas with the 5800X3D, maybe the car's as fast as a Lamborghini per se, but they're not getting backed up on the road. So, I hope that makes sense. I know it's not a perfect analogy, but it should help to get the concept across. Here's how each machine was configured for this test. I'm going to show you some side-by-side -side footage on customs, and then I'm going to do a statistical comparison to determine which CPU wins this face-off.
As you can see here, the 5800X3D has a lower frame time at 5 milliseconds versus the 12900K 7 milliseconds, has a higher FPS average, and the maximums are about equal. The 5800X3D runs at 62 degrees Celsius, 18 degrees cooler than the 12900K. It comes in at 37 watts less power usage and 0.08 volts less on the V-Core. The clock speed is actually lower on the 5800X3D and I ran the memory at 2667 CL20 just to show the power of the 3D V-Cache. In conclusion, the 5800X3D performed better than the 12900K in this comparison, but let's see just how much better it did. In terms of efficiency, the 5800X3D is producing approximately 2.19 FPS per watt. The 12900K comes in at around 1.28 FPS per watt. That means the 5800X3D is operating about 1.7 times more efficiently than the 12900K while outperforming it. Going by typical market prices as of August 3rd, 2022, if we're just looking at the CPU, the 5800X3D comes in at about 0.37 FPS per dollar. The 12900K comes in at about 0.24 FPS per dollar. Obviously, they have different RAM setups and different motherboards and things like that, but if we're just comparing the CPU and the FPS that we produced out of these systems, the 5800X3D, again, is about 1.5 times more efficient in this sense too. So it's giving you about one and a half times more FPS per dollar than the 12900K does in this comparison. So if you're asking me between the 5800X3D and the 12900K for Tarkov, I think it's a no brainer. The 5800X3D wins in a landslide in this face off. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.